Praise God, everybody, and welcome back to another time of study where we study God's Word and, and see how God's Word applies to our life. We, we also study God's Word to see, seek answers to some of the issues and things that we have going on in our lives. We, we'll, we'll guide it and instructed by God's word. And we give God all the glory for all that he has done in our life. We, we, tonight we ask you to continue to lift up and pray our sick and shut in. We have Brother Percy Holly work on our sick and shut in list uh, today. He's in ICU. Right. We ask him that you lift him and the family up nice. in prayer. We got an opportunity to visit with Sister Baker today. Amen. Uh, she's in very good spirits. Amen. Very good spirits today. And she's anxious. She wants she wants to have more therapy so that she can stand up and move around. So that's good news. Amen. And, and there's so many things going on. They're shooting on campus. You know, yes. young men are losing their lives. And mm -hmm. of course, our very own Curtis McClain yes. uh, in the tragic death of him. Right. Uh, funeral range will be next Saturday on the 26th at 1 o'clock. So we ask that you uh, continue to lift that family up in yes. prayer tonight. Amen. 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 Play for our delinquent members. Yes. Amen. Amen. That those who who was employed and, and was working with us and busy with us and worshiping with us and mm -hmm. somehow kind of straight away a little bit. But we know that God is able to pull them back in. Yes. His rod and the staff, they comfort us. Yes. His rod. Amen. It's there to protect us. This staff pulls us back in so that we can be back in good right. form. Amen. 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 So it's so good to see all of you out tonight. It's still a little chilly outside. Yeah. And it's, the weather's where it should be yeah. in the month of November. Yeah. Everyone is preparing. Yeah. Amen. Getting ready for Thanksgiving week. Yeah. Amen. We pray that all is well with everyone. We had an opportunity to send out uh, Thanksgiving baskets. And then we sent out 10, 10, and then all of it was uh, delivered, and we got some response back, Sister Boy did, for those who we sent out. Amen. Hope that amen. everyone else who have received baskets, amen, amen would, would call and let us know how things are going. Amen. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father, we come in the mighty name of Jesus, and our hearts are so grateful and thankful for this beautiful day that you made. We thank you for the sunshine and the cool breeze that, that comes against our bodies, Lord God. Just to able to feel the breeze is a blessing. Amen. There's so many laying on their beds of affliction tonight. We lift up Percy and Francis Hollingsworth tonight. Yes, yes. Lord God, he's already in your hands, but we're touching the grand that you would yes, yes. give him a speedy recovery. Mm -hmm. Not only him, but Sister Baker as well. Yes. Sister Henderson yes, has yes. been going through it. Mother Sam and Denise uh, Simmons, and mm -hmm. as they prepare homegoing services for uh, Curtis McClain. Yes. And Father, we're grateful, Master, that you have saved our soul. Yes. We thank you for making us whole. Yes. We thank you that we have an opportunity to assemble in your house and mm -hmm. to study your word, to see how your word applies to our life. Mm -hmm. We ask for clarity again tonight that you open the pages of, the, of your word and so that we can study your word and give us clarity so that we might continue to grow mm -hmm. and share the good news of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray your blessings on each and every one that forged their way out in the cool breeze of the night to be yes. here tonight and into this day. We love you, Lord. Yes. And we thank you, Lord, for life as well with us as it is. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Tonight we're going to go back and look at a lesson that we taught before uh, concerning the significant results of being justified. And, and that's going to come out of the book of Romans. The book of Romans, chapter 5, 1 through 5. 1 through 5. It's going to show us this lesson is, is, is very important because it's going to show us how to maintain peace. While we while we experiencing the things, the issues, the circumstances that we face in this world, mm -hmm. and also it's, it's going to show us how trials that comes into our lives, when trials come, is there to grow us, to 
to take us to another level in our faith, in our walk with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We just, it's going to be a short lesson unless we have questions. Amen. But we're just going to cover five, five <coughs> verses, beginning in verse 1 of chapter 5. Notice what the scripture says in Romans chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. Therefore, now you know therefore looks back, yeah. right, at, at the previous verses of Paul's study in chapter 4. He said, therefore, being justified by faith, we have, be, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Amen. 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 Again, we're talking about the significance of being justified. Right. Amen. Being justified. Now, in, in the, the fifth chapter of Romans, it's, it's a have some difficult concepts embedded in, in, in the scriptures. Amen. And how a believer state of mind should be while experiencing growth. And, 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 and it's important to understand that once we've given our life to Christ, you know, we we come in at babes. But at babes we, we grow. I think Paul says, he said, you're babes. You know, he, he said, you, you're not able to, to eat the meat of the word of God. Because because there are still schisms among you. You're still, you're still falling out among you. You're still falling out on uh, uh, trivial issues. It's, it's, so so we, God wants us to grow. But the trials that comes, we got to understand, they come to help us to grow. And so Paul says, therefore, and when he said, therefore, he was, he was continuing his study in chapter 4. He was talking about how Abraham had been justified. Abraham had been justified, amen, because he, he stepped out on faith and he trusted God. And he trusted God to, to, for him to give him a, a son. He said, we, we, even in his old age, he didn't, he didn't stray away from his faith in trusting, trusting God. And so, so Paul continued his study in his, his writing in verse 5. He said, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? Now, the basic teaching is this. The basic teaching is that our peace with God is through Jesus Christ. Amen. Whether the believer uh, feels it <clears throat> Uh, accept it, amen, moment by moment or through every situation or every circumstances, we have peace with God. <clears throat> through the turmoils that we go through, there we have peace with God. Now, it ain't easy to get to that place of peace, especially when you get bad news. It, it ain't easy to get to a place. It ain't easy to get to uh, that peace when, when your home is a wreck, you know, it, it ain't easy to get to that peace. But peace is available for us, right? Well, what, what we have to understand is that we've moved from being alienated from God and exposed to condemnation of the wrath of God to a state of reconciliation. He moved us from, moved us from being the wrath of God Brought us into the house. We said he's, he brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. He brought us into, he reconciled us back into his good graces. He, re, he reconciled us back into his peace with him. We all are not, we're not guilty anymore. We don't, we shouldn't feel guilty 
of our past sins anymore. They, uh, we, we should reckon, we should be reconciled and should understand in our own minds that God has brought us a mighty long way. He's not angry with us anymore. What? We have peace with God. Amen. 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 And, and here's the problem that we have. The problem that many uh, believers face is that they still look at back at their things they've done in the past. Amen. Amen. And, and you, you can hear it when they get in the conversation they're still talking about the things they've done in the past. And, okay. and, 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 and lets us know they still feel guilty of some of the things they've done in the past. Amen. But when, when Jesus died on the cross, he took all of that with him. It nailed it on the cross. Amen. So now we have peace with cross. Peace with God, Eric. Jesus had already promised that before he leave, he would leave his peace with them. He said to his disciples. In, in St. John chapter 14, verse 27, he said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Right. Not as the world give it, <coughs> give I unto you. It's a whole different ball game between how the world gives, gives their peace to us than what God gives to us. Right? You have to do something in order for the world peace to, to come into play. And this is what they do every... It, the, the summit, they have summit, you know, nations, so the nations come together together so they can have world peace. But never won't be no peace in this world until Christ Jesus comes back. Amen. When he comes back and gather his bride back to him, amen, and, and, he, and, he, and he brings uh, tribulation all over this world, it, it's going to come back to the same place where he created the world. It's going to be that, but, but they search for peace. They spend money to have peace, but they won't be to be. He, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Amen. He said, then he says, "Let not your heart be troubled, mm -hmm. neither let it be afraid." Mm -hmm. and that word "let" is so important because it's up to you to allow it or disallow it. Mm -hmm. You can you can let trouble into your heart. And let it, let, it, let it come into your heart and be there. And you can worry about it night and day and not get in his sleep. But sometimes, some things you just have to let go. And just give it to God. And go on to sleep. Because the Bible says he never slumber nor does he sleep. Right? So, so if you give it to him, let him handle it. And don't worry about how he handles it. But we're going we to give it to him, then we're going to tell him how he wants him to handle it. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, so Jesus had already told him that. Also, in Isaiah chapter 53, in verse, in verse 5, did I give you 5? He said, But he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquity. Who is the he in this scripture? Jesus. Jesus. Right? The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his strife we are what? Healed. We heal from the guilt and the shame and the things we've done in the past. He, he was beaten all night long. He was chastised for our peace so that we could have peace. But it, like I said, it ain't something that ain't easy to have the kind of peace. Our children will let us have peace. Man, a, a friend will let her have peace. Yes, and, and, and so when they get on the phone, they'll call you and they drop, they just load it all up on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and say, well, what we need to do, we need to unload all of that they don't load it on us. And just look, say, if you gave it to God, have you talked to him? Mm -hmm. He say, cast all your cares upon him for he can care for you. Yeah. He said, well, I, I ain't well, come on, let's pray. So you have to get that load off of you because you can't carry their load and your load as well. Mm -hmm. This is what we say in church. We say he's a heavy load carrier. Mm -hmm. He's a burden bearer. Mm -hmm. But that's, that means we have to give it to him. Mm -hmm. Let him carry it. You remember the, you remember the, 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 the event of the cross event. And he was after he was whipped all night long, all right, and he, he was a bloody mess. Right? 
They, they, he smacked him and put on his beard and put 72 thorns on his head. They marched him down the Jerusalem road. And there was a, there was a, a man there. Right? When he stumbled and fell, I, I thought they might have had that pretty good in the, some of the movies that we've seen. I thought they had that pretty good. Right? And, and when he stumbled with the cross, there was somebody there to help him with the, with the cross. Right? Help him carry the cross to the to, to go God to heal. But now Christ is there to carry our load. Amen. So we just dump it on him. Because he's able, he's, he, his, his shoulders are broad. And he can carry our load. He says, uh, so his stripes, we are healed. A lot of the time we use that particular scripture amen, to, to share the healing blessings that are upon our lives. And, and, and he's not saying in that text, he's not saying you, you heal of all your diseases because there are still those who suffer with diseases. He, he's talking about, see, your, your mind, the, the, the guilt of sin. You heal from that. You don't, you, your, your heart is not wounded from all the things that you've done in the past. People that you may have had encounters with that you didn't have an opportunity to ask to forgive you. And you carry a weight of guilt around because you didn't have an opportunity to tell them, I'm sorry. You ever been to a funeral where the family member, you know, they are they are crying and they're saying to their loved one, I'm sorry. And, and that lets me know they didn't have that opportunity to, to say that to them while they, when they was alive. And so now they're left with this burden. I didn't get a chance to tell my loved one that I'm, I was sorry. So his stripes that he that he he was wounded, and I was stripe, his stripes upon him, right? He healed us from that. But those are the burdens we have to give to, to the Lord. Now, now peace here in the text means that there's no more hostility between us and God. Which also means no sin or sin no longer blocks our relationship with the Lord. Because Christ took our sin, he, he took the burden of sin to the cross. That's why the skies were darkened. And, 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 and preachers look at it as he, he didn't look upon his son. Because the weight of the world, the world's sin was upon his shoulder. So he took the sin and he nailed it onto the cross. He died for the sins of the world. So sin no longer blocks us from having a personal relationship with God. Amen. And we got to understand when we when we are when we justified, we got to know that we are justified. Just like when you when you leave the courthouse, you you know when, uh, you remember when Brother Kevin was teaching a couple of Sundays ago. He said he had something in his pocket. I mean, he had a, a, a get out of jail pass. I don't know what to get a get out of jail pass, but he had a, a pass in his pocket. Right? He he felt he felt relief that he didn't get no ticket. And when the when you go to go to court and the, and the judge say. I don't, we don't find no no charges. We find you not guilty. You you feel a sense of relief, yeah. right? The same way we should feel a sense of relief that we no longer held guilty, Amen, for the, for the sins of the world, for the sins that we've committed in the past. Mm -hmm. You see, that now things we have done mm -hmm. and we do every day. And we repent and, and ask forgiveness of those things that we do every day. Right? Oftentimes, when I'm driving or when I'm conscious of it, I'm constantly asking, Lord, would you forgive me? And, and, I'm like, and I add to my prayer, which is my personal prayer, I always say, Lord, if I said or done anything that's not pleasing in your sight, please forgive me. Because sometimes I do get in a conversation, I might say some things that might hurt that person's feelings. So, and I apologize to them, but I'm also going to ask the Lord to please forgive me as well. 
Before I crawled into bed and go off to sleep, I said, Lord, please forgive me for the, the, the things I've done today. What? And so I, I, I feel comfortable knowing that he's forgiven me. He hears us when we pray. Mm -hmm. he, don't, he don't have this timeline where it's a specific time that we need to call him or pray to him. We can call him at any time because his phone line or his, his, his line is never busy. So, so, so sin do not block us from our relationship with God. And that's a blessing. Amen. So, so being justified means that we no longer stand guilty before God. Also, not just, and, and also being justified strengthens our relationship with God. And let me show you how I strengthen our relationship with God. Because he, he better expresses how blessed we are knowing that we have been justified in, in verse 2. Notice what he said. By whom also we have access. We come in out of Romans chapter, chapter 5 and we have it posted. He said, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. He said, this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Look what he said. By whom? Me? Who is by whom? Who is the by whom? Christ Jesus. By Christ Jesus, we have access because he died on the cross. He died for us. We now have access by faith into his grace. Right? That word access here means that we've been allowed or given permission to enter into God's grace or into his favor. So, so oftentimes we don't ask God for grace. He just pours his grace on us. Okay. There's, there's times, if you, you may not recognize it or, 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 or see it happen, there are times when you think it's going to be a difficult time, amen, doing something, the God's favor be on your life. And it just it's open. The door just open. There are times there are times where the favor of God has been on my life where I feel as if man, I'm going to get up there and they take, they're going to turn me away because I ain't got enough information. You know, they don't, they turn everybody away because they don't have enough information. And when I get up there, the, la the lady just say, come on, what you got? What you got? That's the favor of God. Allow me to proceed, proceed on, knowing I didn't have enough information. Right, right. Amen. God's favor is on my life. Amen. Right? You ever been to a, a wilder world? Right? And when you get up to the line, the, the girl, she get ready to put the thing, cut the light on. But when she see you, she say, come on. Okay. <laughs> the favor of God. Just, yeah. You see what I'm saying? The, these little spurts of favor in our life, we don't recognize them, but they're coming from God. Right? He said, by whom we all have access by faith to God. But it must be by faith to have access to his grace. Right? God's grace is unmerited favor on our lives. He, Christ Jesus is, he's our grace because he's the one who died on the cross. Right. We have access, we have access by faith into his grace. We stand our ground by faith. Because we know faith pleases God. We trust him in every area of our life. We don't we dare not attempt anything without praying. Right? We 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 we, we dare not attempt anything without consulting heaven first. First on those big ticket items, right? Or on some issues on our lives and the relationship, we need to consult God first to see what heaven has to say. And then oftentimes when heaven is silent, that means they don't move, right? Uh, there's a song out there, an RV rapper, amen. He said, when I move, you move. And those songs. <laughs> And, and, and actually, that's what he's saying. That's actually what he's saying. That's what the children of Israel was doing. If the cloud by day didn't move, they didn't move. They stayed right where they was at. 
And so if you don't hear an answer from God, don't mean that he did not have, have denied it. He said, you said, your time, he's not ready, amen, to give you an answer. So we just hold steady, steadfast, until we hear from God. And sometimes we so be so impatient. In, in the text, in our in these few verses, experience is gonna experience will take us to. I mean, we're gonna from, from being patient to gonna go to experience. We're gonna get there because the trials of our faith and the times and the, the things that we've been exposed to and the pressures of life that comes against our life, he takes us to a new level as we walk with Jesus Christ. So you are, you are soldiers in God's army. You are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. You, you share the good news wherever you go. Yeah, Brother McCauley, that's all he, he do. He, he, he asks you what church you will. Yes. I mean, he just gets into conversation no, with you. Him, he gets into conversation with you. He does. In the line you live, yeah. 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 and, and that's what we should be doing, All right? We stand our ground by faith in the grace of God. When the pressures of life is suppressing us, and because we know we have access to the grace of God, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. See, that's the things, the knowledge and revelation that we learn. That's what makes us. That's what makes us dangerous, right, against the darkness of this world. Because now we have we have revelation knowledge. And a lot of believers suffer because they don't have revelation knowledge. They allow the, they allow the, the issues of life, they allow the darkness, the, the dark attacks that comes against them to bar them down or get them to turn around because they don't have revelation knowledge. And when you, when you got revelation knowledge of who you are and who and who's who's fighting for you, you can stand against the wells of the devil. Even if your armor is not as tight as you think it should be. Because you know who, who's fighting your battle. He says, stand still because the battle's not yours. You see. So so again, we rejoice. At the end of that, he said, we rejoice of the glory of God, who we rejoice in knowing that we are we are saved. Now God, in God's word, He said, "I shall, I will not share my glory with no one." But in this text, He said, "We rejoice in hope of the glory of God." That means the goodness of God is upon our life, and know that His goodness is allowing us free access by faith into His grace. There's a there's a, a, a scripture I want to turn to, First John. Chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. Look what it says. He beloved, now are we the sons of God. Sons and daughters of God. Because I've said before in many times in my teaching that the scriptures are written in a masculine tense. So you rarely see daughter there. But you are, he said, my, my beloved, now we are sons of God. And he says, it do not yet appear what we shall be. We have something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. He said, but we know. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be what? Like the, 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 we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he yes. is. And that's a promise. Go back to go back to. He said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and do not yet appear what we shall, what shall be. That's a hope right there. That's something to look forward to. Right? When, when this world down here cannot afford us a home anymore, we have something to look forward to. If he comes back before we leave here, amen, he, we're going to be caught up in the sky, changed in the twinkling of an eye. We, we enter into a win-win situation Amen. when we gave our life to Christ. Amen. Right? The enemy, enemy comes to kill, kill, steal, and destroy, but we still win. He may take some things from us, we still win. And, and that was a song, Sister McCauley, back in the, 
Back in the dirt day, he said, we going in the enemy camp and take back what belongs. We ain't finna do all that. You ain't got to do all that. You ain't got to go in the enemy camp and try to take nothing back. <laughs> right? Because listen, what, what's, what's for you is for you. And the enemy can't take it. What God gives you, he can't take it anyway. You got to understand that. A lot of times, when you make a purchase, and God say, yeah, go out there, but God give you the finances to make a purchase, and you don't pray it on this particular automobile, and God said, yes, now move, and you're going to make that purchase, God will make sure you have the finance to make sure that purchase, that you pay off that thing. Amen. He'll make sure of it. Let me, let me test a moment. My wife and I, I had a white Cadillac. My wife had a, a cutlass parked out in front of the house. They stole the cutlass, not the Cadillac. All right, and I, I would think they would take the Cadillac. So the cutlass, I think, guess the cutlass was easy to take. Brand new tires all the way around. They took the cutlass. We turned it in to the officers. They might have did a search for it, but they never come back with it. My wife started believing. Believe in God for another car. I'm telling you, she, she ran me crazy telling me what she believed in God for. She went to the auto, she went to the car lot, the man showed them things, she said, I know what God don't show me. She was acting strange. <laughs> I'm telling you, she was acting strange. She kept believing God for a certain color, a certain automobile, and that certain color, that certain automobile showed up on the line. I'm telling you. And she had no problem paying it all. I didn't have to help her pay it all. Thank God. <laughs> I mean, but I saw it in action. She didn't deviate from what the what Lord had showed her. She said she saw it. I, you know, you know, I was feeling well, you know, leave that alone, just get what you get on the farm. Oh, the Lord don't show me. And the the caller. The car, the, it was a town car. It showed up on the lot. It's still in the yard now. I don't know why she ain't driving it. But, but it did. I, I, I saw it happen. She believed God forward. And, and, the, and the Lord did. We, we believe God. We believe God. We believe God that we're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. This immortality is going to turn to immortality. We're not, our body's not going to be corrupted anymore with the, with the sin of this old world. It's not going to be corrupted anymore. We're going to live, we're going to live forever in eternity with the Lord. Amen. We don't have to worry about bills no more, Sister Shaw. Yes, sir. We don't have to worry about calling us, asking us, would you send a donation this way? <laughs> we don't have to worry about that. We ain't got to worry about what kind of clothes we're going to wear, what the new fashion is going to be out there. We ain't got to worry about all of that stuff anymore. Amen. We ain't got to, listen, we ain't got to worry about dieting anymore. Amen. That's a good one, ain't it? You ain't got to worry about it. I don't know about eating steaks. I don't know if they ain't say nothing about, about no steaks and all of that, but I know they say that's a tree. They have very few. Amen. Amen. They, they, them few show up all the time. And there's a leaf that's on that tree, good for a healing of a nation. There's water running from the throne of God that's running down to the middle of the trees. I'm, I'm telling you, that's, that's paradise. That's what we're looking forward to. So, so we don't have to worry about that. Right? That's what he's saying. We rejoice in hope in the glory of God or we rejoice in knowing that we are saved. And that's, that's where I, I, would, I would love for this membership, this congregation, to know that you rejoice that I'm saved. Here's what Pastor Bailey Smith said. It's good to be a Christian. Amen. I mean, everywhere you go, you can, you can debate with him, whatever you want to. He would he was end and say, I'm glad. It's good to be a Christian. Amen. It, it is to know that you're saved. Not that I think I'm saved, but know that I'm saved. And because we share into his glory of God, we have confidence in every abnormal circumstance that come 
our way, he will give us the strength to endure with a greater degree of strength. Amen. Notice what he says back in verse 3. Verse 3 in chapter 5. Mm -hmm. oh, verse 3 in chapter 5. Look what he said. He said, we're not glorying also, we're not rejoicing also because we're in the glory of the Lord. He said, not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Yeah. How many people do you see going around praising God that, that I'm in tribulation? That I'm going through some things. You rarely see it, man. Woe is me. Now, that child, do you know? That we, we love to tell people about the trouble we got. He said, he said, not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Because we know when tribulation comes, that's what the grace of God is going to show up. He's, this is scripture. This is very, he said, God said, I'm a very present help in times of trouble. The moment trouble shows up, the, the moment turmoil shows up, he's there to strengthen us. He's there to give us strength. But we fall out. We get weak in the knee. We fall out. We allow our humanism, amen, to take over our spiritualism. Right? We have a spirit man that's stronger than the natural man. Amen. But the natural man takes over when, when something falls out or goes wrong in our life. The natural man shows up first yeah. until words of comfort come. And when words of comfort come, the strengthened man, the spiritual man is strengthened. And then oftentimes, Sister Shaw, the spiritual man is, is lying dormant. Well, the natural man takes completely over. Because it's hard to get a grip on things. And I'm, I'm not saying, what I am saying is this. When, when, when death enters into our chain, into our family, death always impacts us in a hard, harsh way. I don't care if that family member laying on their bed has been there in the hospital. Death, when death comes, it always comes and impacts us in various ways. But death is going to be the last enemy that God destroys. He says, he said, not only so. He, and and he, he was saying, not only so, from verse 2, that we rejoice in hope in the glory of God. He said, we not only glory, we not only rejoice in the glory of God, more than the glory of God, and that they have given us access to to God, but we glory because we know tribulation. When tribulation comes, we can rejoice. Amen. He said, also knowing that tribulation working what? Patience. So, so it's something that you have to know. It's something that you have to know. He's bringing, he's bringing trouble our way so that he can elevate us to another level. You see what I'm saying? See, now, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be very transparent in, in this study tonight. I have I have not passed the patient thing yet. I'm still in the classroom. Every time I get ready to get my diploma in patience, they say you ain't got enough credits. Because I failed in that area. But he says tribulation also, knowing that tribulation work is patience. So sometimes when trouble comes into our realm, into our homes, or in our jobs, it's there to, to grow us, to make us patient. Sometimes you just got to wait till this thing goes, blows over. Just like a storm that comes in in the middle of the night or during the course of the day. You just got to wait till the storm. You ever been riding in a storm? And all of a sudden, you know, you, 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 it, it rain is pouring down so hard, you can't go no further. You just got to pull over or find a bridge to go up on. You just got to wait. You got to be patient till the storm blows over. And once the storm blows over, then you can proceed on. I saw a story the other day, and, it, and it's an old story, but it's just kind of refreshing. This guy was saying he's letting his daughter drive his car. And his daughter was driving his car, and, and the daughter, while driving the car, they ran into a storm. And the daughter was telling the dad, should I pull over? And the dad was saying, keep driving. Keep driving to the storm. And as they kept on driving to the storm, they came to the point where they drove 
through the storm and then to sunlight. Amen. But sometimes tribulation will cause you to pull over. Amen. Cause you to take a breath. Gather yourself. Don't allow the natural man to take over. Allow the spiritual man to start speaking into your, speaking into your spirit. Because here's how God communicates with us. He communicates with us through our spirit. To our spirit man. Not the natural man. See, the natural man can't understand what we're dealing with tonight. Right? It is, it's, he can't discern. He can't understand because it's spiritual. But your spiritual man understands what we're dealing with tonight. And we're dealing with, we're dealing with the process here. Trial, the process of trial rolls us to a level, amen, where we can handle some things that comes in our life. Not only are we able to handle those things, but we're able to pass on this revelation knowledge to our sons and daughters, to our friends. Because grant you, there are going to be some friends, there are going to be some people that we know that's going to call and ask you some questions. All right? Say, I'm trusting God. That's always been mine. So I'm trusting God. It's a safe place when you're dealing with people who have Who's, in, who's, who's having some trouble in their life. Not only that, but look what we said. He, he, from, from being patient, tribulation breaking patient, but in verse 4, it brings us to another level. In verse 4, he said, and patience brings us the experience. Because while you're waiting, tribulation comes, and because you can't do nothing but wait on the Lord, you gather experience from it. And that experience brings you to hope. Because the Lord is going to bring you straight through it. And see, your experience, Sister Shaw, is what, what you share with others who are going through it. Because you went through it, you was able to go through it. See, it's hard for, it's hard for a person who never dealt with drugs to share with somebody who's on drugs. Because you ain't had that experience. But if you've been there, and God has brought you through it, you can share. You see? So the experiences that you have, have shared, have dealt with in your life, you're able to deal with that. You're able to share with others mm -hmm. and how they can overcome those things as well. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. The, isn't it great to understand that scripture, scripture always brings us to scripture? Mm -hmm. Scripture always Scripture always uh, brings us to the point where it gives us the answer in Scripture. Right? <laughs> I see you, your, your eyes kind of sprinkle up a little bit. <laughs> Romans 8, Romans 8, 28. Look what it says. And we know. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. All things. All things work together. All things work together. Right? For the good, not for the bad. So when tribulation comes, it's, it's working for your, your good, not for your bad. Because tribulation brings you to a place where it brings you patience. Then patience brings you to a place where you have experience. And then that experience gives you, what, newfound hope. He said all things work together for the good. To them that love God, that's the qualifier, that love God. You don't love God, those things you're going through may not work out for your good. He said, but, and also to them who are called. We call, he called us from darkness into his marvelous light. Right? Not only did he call us from darkness into his marvelous light, but he put in us the divine Holy Spirit to help lead and guide us. That's the, that's the, the conscious thought in us. You, you ever get to say, mm. something told me. Mm. That's, just, that's the Spirit of God talking to you. Mm. Something told me. Mm. He didn't listen. Didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> something, just something told me not to go that way. Mm. Spirit of God just speaking to us. Right. Amen. Don't holler at us. Sometimes while we sleep, if we're going to try to work out a problem during the course of the day, we just can't figure it out. Then while we slumbering and sleeping, somehow he just 
He gives us the answer while we sleep. Amen. Wake up in the morning refreshed. You gotta want to go do it because now you have an answer. See, he promised never to leave us. He promised never to forsake us. And he's doing just that with us. Amen. In the person of the divine Holy Spirit. He said, those that are called according to his purpose. All of us got a purpose. We got a purpose. He had a plan for us and a purpose for our lives. He didn't just save you just, just so that you can enjoy paradise. He saved you so that you can share the goodness with others. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you rather uh, uh, share the good news for others so that others that you know can know what you know and the revelation knowledge that you have gained down through the years? I desire that my family, they remember my family be saved. Mm -hmm. They, they will not listen. They, they won't listen, but I pray that they be saved. I pray if they don't listen to me or hear me, that Lord, you send someone back mm -hmm. that they'll listen to. And if they'll listen to them, maybe Lord, they they will they will see that they need they need you in their lives. Yeah. I can't give up on them, Lord. <coughs> but some people, they didn't give up on me. Right. Right. The oftentimes that's the hardest place for you to witness, right in Jerusalem, yeah. right where you're from. Because they know your past. Yeah. And because they know your past, they can't accept your change. Mm -hmm. And because they can't accept your change, they refuse the re revelation that you have to share. Mm -hmm. First Peter. First Peter 1 and 7. Notice what this is, this is, this is some things you gotta grab hold to. He said that the trials of your faith being much more precious than gold that perish through it be tried with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Every day you, your faith is going to be tried. It's, it's going to be tried and tested in some, some hard things, some hard circumstances, some tough situations. It's going to be tried. But you got to know that your faith is precious, precious, just like gold. What do you do? When you take gold and you put it in the furnace, put it in the heat, what does it do? It purifies it. It purifies it. But when it melts down, what is it? Is it no good? It's still gold. Right? Silver the same way. Same way with us. I don't care how much pressure be on you. I don't care how much the enemy throw at you. Your faith is still faith in God. Amen. It, it don't take much. It don't take much of your faith to battle the wells of the devil. Just a small muscle seed. I ain't saying go out there and chop up the mountain and tell the mountain to move because some of us have some mountains of problems in our life. But you definitely have to speak to the trouble. Speak to the mountains. The trials of your faith being much more precious than a gold that precious through the trials with fire might be found to the praise and honor and glory of the period of Christ Jesus. Won't, won't it be great in a glorious time? And, and preachers talk about it all the time. When you stand before the white throne of God and God say, well done. When he's saying well done, he's talking about all the stuff. I'm going to say a word. I'm going to say the S word. Amen. All the stuff you don't been to down here. And you didn't give up. You still held on. People walked out, walked away from you, but you still have well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what he's talking about. Honor the glory of the period of Jesus Christ. That's a good thing. But let me tell you, that's going to come from times. Pre preachers used to say back in the day, but they changed that metaphor because they use it as a metaphor that, that I take I take my I take my Christianity and I put it on the shelf and I come down there boy and I whoop your <laughs> you can't take it off like that and put it on no shelf 
You go down there and get into it at the prison and fight. You can't take it off. Right. That's what he said. That my dad, my, my, yeah, my dad, where you put it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So, so patient, when we patient, trying, when we try, is proven. And when our faith is proven and tested, amen, we're able to gather ourselves. There are seasons in our life, amen, that we're going to be tested and tried. Amen. That's with the McLean family. They're they going through this season. Amen. Sister Henderson going through that season. Amen. People are going through their season and time. And then that's the time where the warriors got to stand up and be strong. Amen. 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 See, the church weep with those who weep. Rejoice with those who rejoice. You see? So, so we we're gonna have to we're gonna have to be strong for them. And here's what we gotta understand about suffering. Suff the progression of suffering begins, amen, with suffering. That's the progression. Our growth begins with suffering. And with Christ, when we suffer for Christ, it builds our character. And when it builds our character, the, the results of that is like a chain reaction. That's why they can say he, he's, he and she are the same wherever you see them. Their character never change. Right? So that's what we want people to see. We want to see us the same way they see us in church, they see us out there in the world. No matter where we at, we, we, we act the same way because we, we have the character of Christ is on our lives. Paul says experience builds us up. Not only it builds it up, but it builds it up to hope. And in verse 5, he said, the hope make us not ashamed. When I'm trusting and believing and expecting, I'm not going to be ashamed. See, this is not a worldly expectancy. This is a spiritual expectancy. Because God said, I believe it. That it's going to come to pass. That's what verse 5 says. And hope make us not ashamed. Because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And here's the problem that I've, I've come to understand. All right? There are some believers, amen, that are not communicating with God. The Holy Spirit, they, they've been saved on their way to heaven, but they have not a relationship with God. They don't take time to pray. They don't take time to worship. They have no communication. He says, and nobody said, because the love of God is shared abroad in their hearts. When you know that you know God loves me, and I know he's not going to leave me in this condition, I don't have to, I don't have to lay there and work. But there's believers, those who claim to be Christians, laying there water and have a pity pack party, because the love that God is going to share with them, they have no communication with them, and they don't have a revelation that they knowledge to know that He loves them. He said that love is shared abroad to all of us who have, who have given our life to Jesus Christ. That's that's something that you know. Now I might not tell my wife every day that, "Honey, I love you. I love you." I don't walk around the house and tell her, "I love you. I love you. I love you." There might be times that she might feel as if I don't love her, and that might be because I haven't done some things, right? But but I, she should know that I love her. Re regardless of how we fuss, she got to know that I, I love her. And this is how we should know the relationship we have with God. We should know that he loves us. He proved his love to us by giving his only begotten son. Over some years ago, he proved, he demonstrated his love for us. That he has got a, he got a cop, God made love for us. Yeah. That never changes. Yeah. I don't care what we do, it ain't changing. Right. He, that, that he says love for us is forever. Mm -hmm. But we got, we got some who, who don't communicate with God. And they discover that they, they're in a mess. And when they realize that God's been there the whole time. He never left them, never forsake them, but they never reached out. They never cried out. Mm. And he's just waiting on the crowd. Yeah. Help is always available for the believer. 
Because we stand in his favor. We have access to grace. Psalms 40. This is what God is seeking. God is seeking. He said, let all those that seek thee rejoice. And that's, it, it, it's, it's kind of self-explanatory because he said, if I'm seeking him, I, I'm going to rejoice to know that I'm going to find him. He said, if you seek me, you're going to find me. He said, and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually, the Lord is magnified. So when you when you down your back up against a wall and you don't feel as if you don't ever get back up, start praising God. Start magnifying God. Start letting him know who, Lord, I love you. I know you're still in control, even in my situation. I might not can see it, I might not can feel it, but I know you're still in control. Amen. Even if even if, if the results of this means that my the the, the light in my eyes is gonna go out. And, and, and I no longer have a place in this world. I know that you said that I got a place with you. So Lord, I'm not worried. I'm, going, I'm just going to praise you right here. I'm going to magnify you. And those who are around me are going to know that I'm praising you. Because I don't want them to know that I don't gave, give up. At the end of my journey, I don't want them to say, oh, he gave up at the end. Oh, he did. That boy gave out. I thought he was strong. No, I want to stay strong until the end. Amen. And I want you guys to stay strong until the end. Because being justified and knowing that you are justified can bring great joy and confidence mm -hmm. as you walk through this world. Because the enemy, the enemy is going to attack you. Amen. And he used the one closer to you to attack you. Yes. To, 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 to make you kind of off balance. And so you, you walk straight, but all of a sudden you're off balance. But then the Lord kind of straighten you up because you know you know who it is who you stand for. You know you have access to the favor of God. Amen. Amen. And then and then finally, my brothers, and, and take I want I want you to take this lesson and not keep it to yourself, but share it with others. Nowhere is found in, in Romans chapter five. Know the five verses in chapter five. Know how to apply those five verses. In the conversation that you use with others who might be stressed, stressed out. Know how to find it and turn to it and show them. And so, they, and so when they read it for themselves, the, the word from the pages jumps on the pages into their ear gates. And when it enters from the ear gate, it's getting down into their hearts. And when to get to when that seed is planted in their heart, it's gonna God will water it. And then one day you'll see them cry out. I yield you. What must I do to be saved? Amen. Amen. Any questions tonight? Y'all let me roll to that thing tonight. I just want to say, you know, that we don't look at it, but I've heard of several people in the past say, Lord, give me more faith. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize when they're asking for their, their faith to be strengthened, mm -hmm. they're actually asking for tribulation. To right. come across. Right. Because like I said, the tribulation, the things that we go through is going to strengthen us. Right. And tribulation, I'm saying more or less, uh, is a strengthening tool. Right. It is. But you saw it there with tribulation. Tribulation work is patient. Work is patient. Yes, sir. So therefore, you know, like I said, uh, it may be a step-by-step -step process. Mm -hmm. And like I said, for a purifying goal, our faith has to be purified. Yeah. We might say, oh, well, I got all my faith to be in Christ. Then here comes a tribulation. Yeah. And rather just turning it over to the Lord, uh, putting it in his hands and leaving it there, we got to get on the phone, we got to start text messaging. Yeah. Yeah. Tell and him everything. Him. He's the only one that needs to know about it. He's the only one. He's the only one. That's, good. That's a good observation. A good observation that you use. And oftentimes these people do say that. And you hear them pray that. Yeah. You know, when they pray in a, 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 a congregation of prayer, they say, Lord, strengthen my faith. You know, and, and what you ask in the Lord to bring some trials. Yeah. And it's not that we <laughs> didn't ask for a, a stronger faith, but we could already have a base in our heart. We don't know what steps is going to be taken to try our faith. Yeah. In the same token, uh, 
Brother Donnie, you gotta understand, you gotta utilize the faith you got. Yeah, right. Because the scripture already said, you, your faith is as small as a grain of mustard seed, it's powerful enough, amen, to speak to the mountain. Mm -hmm. And that mountain will be moved. Mm -hmm. So you have to utilize the faith that you got. And each time you utilize your faith, your faith grows a little bit stronger and stronger. Right. That's when we start out as babes, and I've used this observation in, in, in early in my teaching. When you first come to Christ as a babe, when you ask for things, it seems like it, boom, it shows up yeah. immediately. Then as you grow, you ask for things, it takes a little minute to get there. Mm -hmm. And so, so when you start getting mature and you start asking, keep asking, it takes a little longer for to get there because he's strengthening your faith. Mm -hmm. Right? And so now, now the, now the Hebrews scripture come in, scripture, uh, Hebrews 11 and 1 come in. He said, now faith is mm -hmm. the substance of things hoped for. Right? Mm -hmm. right? And the evidence of things not seen. So that way it comes in. Now you mature. You know it's coming. If you're asking in his will, you know it's going to come. You don't know when, but I'm going to have faith to wait on it. Right. You, you follow what I'm saying? And then another observation I can see it as far as our faith being tried like gold, well it's going to be tried. Yeah. It's gonna, you're going to try your faith. You ain't got to ask him to. He's going to try your faith. You're a child of God. He wants you to grow. He's going to bring something in your path, allow something to come in your path so your faith can be tried. Yeah. You know, and you know, excuse me, and you know, scripture says, you know, he won't put on no, no more than we can bear. Yeah. You know, which I can accept that. But it kind of, and this is not really pertaining to the Bible, but it reminds me of an experience I had when I was in the military. Yeah. I was in, I was a God on barrier. Mm -hmm. And those who don't know, God done buried out in front of everybody carrying the company flag. Mm -hmm. And during that time back in the you know, we had to twirl and everything else. Well, I was used to doing one or two miles. That wasn't no problem. But it come time, we had to force more in a five mile. Yeah. And I got to the point, I mean, I got, on, I got my rifle, I got my pack, and then I got a flag up there twirling it. I was at the point that uh, I was ready to give up and let the rest of the company mm -hmm. pass me. Well, here come the drill sergeant. He come up and he grab my, my pack strap. Yeah. He said, well, we're going to get you through this. I'm going, man, look, you're going to drag me through it. <laughs> but with him on my side, I made that five mm -hmm. miles, no problem. Mm -hmm. And we got back in the bathroom. He said, now, nah, I helped you along. Then he said, I know you was cursing me out of your mind the whole time. I'm going, man, I'm ready to pass out. Mm -hmm. He said, well, I didn't put you to a limit that you couldn't put yourself. All right. And that's the same way faith. We, won't, we can't increase our faith on our own. You know, we might say or we might think we can, mm -hmm. but like I said, it takes those trials and those tribulations to increase our faith and strength in us. Yeah. And the experience that we have through those trials. Yeah. 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 So, I, I, this could be tested by God. Because see, you can tell when you're tested by him, he knows what you can stand. He already knows. That's why you're testing him. And it makes you strong. Mm -hmm. You hear that? that Whatever's going to kill you will make you strong. He's not going to kill you. I heard that. He's, he's going to make you strong. I heard and I've learned. I learned. I learned to shut my mouth, be quiet, and I still learn. I learned. And if I feel myself want to go there, well, shut your mouth. And you, have you passed out that class? <laughs> no. Okay. No. All right. <laughs> I don't pass it. Right. I, still, I still catch, but then I catch myself. Yeah. And I have to say, uh uh. Lord, I'm not pleased what comes out of my mouth. Stop me. And he stops me. Yeah. I ask him to stop me. Because yeah. I can't stop myself. I got you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, thing been going on in our house for I don't know how long. The phone rang. Might be going on in y'all house. They said, this is John. I'm calling to tell you about Medicare. You know, and I get annoyed at them people. But when they call and tell, they don't never ask to speak to nobody. But uh, I tell them, do you know about Jesus? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> they don't want to hear you. They hang up your phone. All right, hang up. Yeah. Let, let me close. And brother, it's good to have you tonight. Let me close with this. And, and, and it's something that Brother Donnie says. And, and when we think about the analogy that he won't put more on you than you can bear. Mm -hmm. Think about it. He won't put more on you than That's you right. can bear. The, the object of this, the answer is, do you really know how much you can bear? Yeah. 
Sometimes yeah. he sometimes he pressing you and he'll bend you. He ain't gonna break you, he'll bend you. Yeah. And you don't know how much you can bear. Yeah. Yeah. You start crying out, but he'll get you to that point where when you start crying out and your dependency is totally yeah. dependent on him. Yeah. And then and, and, and as as believers, we don't totally depend on him. Yeah. We, we depend on our assets. We depend on our education. We depend on all of that. But he, he wants us to get to a point where we totally depend on him. And when we get to that point, yeah, yeah he, that's where he wants us at that point. And when we're at that point, then doors just fly open. And things that you can you can do and you can share and, and you can make happen because your dependency is on him, not, not you. And then when you know that the Lord allow you to, to make things happen or help you to move things, give him glory. Amen. Amen. Hey, Pastor, I know you said that was it, but do you remember what you said about <coughs> remember? You said something about remember when you first started. I can't even remember what it was. You said something I remember. Uh, I remember we remember stuff, you know, that God did for us, but we don't give him the glory. That's what we should do. Yeah. When we remember, well, we've been through this and we've been doing this, yeah. but he brought us out of it. Well, out. you know, when I be thinking about it, I said, well, thank God he brought me out of it, you know. So, yeah. I ain't been good all my life. I'm yeah. trying to do good now and can't even do it. I got you. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's close this out. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for tonight's day. Yeah. And Father, we thank you for the members that have come out tonight to share in with the teaching tonight. We thank you for the assets we have and the grace that you have given us. Yeah. We thank you for helping us to grow. We know trials bring us not to hurt us or not to crucify us, but trials that come in our life help us to grow. We pray for every faithful friend and all members that are viewing us tonight. We pray that they would capture and take the lesson tonight, the scripture tonight, and make it their scriptures, that they would post and they would share with others. Father, we lift up a purse tonight. We ask now so that you just touch his body. Give the doctors, the nurses, and those who's, who's knowledge about medical things, the not right knowledge to help him in his needs and, and the complication that he's having with his body. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray, oh God, that you would comfort Denisha and their family, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Help them understand, Lord God, we never know mm -hmm. when our life down here mm -hmm. will end. Mm -hmm. But we know, Lord God, when it does end, because we have accepted you as our Savior, mm -hmm. we got a home on high. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.